This video on how to create a literary analysis paragraph right, is meant to be used in conjunction with um, my essay on how to write a literary analysis. And it's all right in here. It will be in one of your assignments that you upload. But to write the paragraph, what we're going to do is use a rubric. Right? And this video is designed just to help you through the first stages. All right, number one is the assignment information. Um, everything on the left side of the rubric you should recreate on the right side in your own way. All right, so you always want your assignment to look good. To that end, make sure you have your name, class name, the section, the title of the assignment, and then the date. As we scroll down, you see the first part of a paragraph, all right? is basically stating the theme, indicating the general direction of the paragraph. And it's best if you can think of a one-word universal theme um, that is going to be captured in that paragraph. If you find yourself veering off that theme and into other themes, you're probably starting to do what we call rambling. All right, so I'd put the one-word theme above your paragraph. Then right below it, uh, why don't you choose a quote from the piece of literature that you're analyzing and from that quote, we're going to use that for text support later on. All right. Notice it's in italics. It's centered. The title of the book is always in italics. And I put it within brackets. You could do it within uh, parentheses if you want. And then the uh, chapter or page number. Okay. The first part of our paragraph is the opening line. That wants to work as a hook and introduce the general theme of the paragraph. When I say general, it means sort of the universal theme. Don't mention the, the book or the story or the poem right now. You just want to hook your reader in that you're going to be talking about something which could be important to them in their life. Nothing beats spending time with a good friend, something we can all relate to. Then immediately in the second sentence, or perhaps the second clause, that's when you want to introduce the piece of literature and the theme of your paragraph. In the book, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn by Mark Twain, Huck and Jim grow to be two inseparable friends that set out on a great journey together. Notice that the theme of friendship is in that second line. All right. Be sure to include the specific reference to the writing piece and a specific reference to your one word theme in this paragraph. Now that acts almost as the topic sentence of a paragraph. But to make it even better and more concise, we add what we call the one-two punch. And in the one-two punch, that's when you narrow down your theme even further to something that you can write about in a single paragraph. The two companions go through a lot over their time together, but never do they give up on each other. They are as different as people can be physically, however, it is their similar minds that bring them together as friends. And so this last little bit is going to be about the friendship of Jim and Huck and how their mindset is what brings them together as friends. Now this has the potential to be a great paragraph. Now you have to add some support. The first third of the paragraph really is all about introducing the theme. The next section, the central section of the paragraph, wants to add the supporting evidence. So in this we have both text reference, which refers to something that's happening in the, in the book or the story or the poem, and then it's followed by text support, which is the actual text from the book. Now, leading into the text support, we have the text reference, and I call that the setup. In that setup, you want to make sure you have the who, what, when, where, why of what's happening in that story or poem or piece of literature leading into the quote. In the first couple of days after he ran away from his pap's house, Huck felt very much alone in the vast world that he was hiding in. No friends, no nothing. That was before he found Jim. One day while Huck was out exploring the island, he stumbles upon Jim's camp. While he's appalled that Jim, away, Jim would run away from his Watson, he is happy that he now has a companion on the island. Even though Jim thinks Huck is a ghost at first, Huck is quick to convince him that he is not. So this is the text reference. It sets the, sets the, uh, the tone and the scene 
for where the text support comes. Now the text support is the actual text reference from the book. And if it covers up more than three lines in your paragraph, you want to make sure you indent it as a block quote. Otherwise, just leave it as um, a sentence or two sentences within the text of the paragraph. Well, I weren't long making him understand I weren't dead. I was ever so glad to see Jim. I weren't lonesome now. I told him I weren't afraid of him telling the people where I was. And then you have right here the citation where the quote actually came from. All right, so that's the actual text support. And once you have the text reference and the text support in, now the important part, probably the most important part of the paragraph, is the last sections here, which I call the head and heart. That's where you tell your reader what you think and feel and understand about that piece of literature. Um, and really, it's very difficult to be wrong if you're truthful and you make sure that what you write about in this section relates directly to everything else you wrote in the first part of the paragraph. Huck declares a friend as someone who he can trust. By saying that he was not scared of Jim telling on him, he is showing that he trusts Jim as a good friend. And he goes on and on and he talks. And he writes for quite a bit. All right. After you do that, it's time to get out of the paragraph. And I call this the get on or get out. Get on means you're going to write another paragraph. It might be a paragraph you're writing for an essay. And they want to transition into the next paragraph. But if you're just writing a single response paragraph, you want to have a really paragraph uh, ending that sounds like a conclusion. For Huck and Jim, their friendship has allowed them to succeed and thrive together. Their friendship has allowed them to succeed and thrive together. So again, he emphasizes the theme that he started with at the beginning of the sentence. So overall, this makes for a really fine paragraph. And this is kind of what it should look like. You should have his information up here, assignment information on the top right, but I'll forgive him for that. And now he's got a good-looking paragraph. One thing to notice, okay, he indents the first line of the first paragraph. He has a quote indented as a block quote. And don't indent, don't tab this first sentence after the quote, because a reader will think it's a new paragraph with a new topic. And you can do all this, all right, you're well on your way to creating a great, literary analysis paragraph that'll serve you well for as long as you're writing about anything that needs some kind of analysis. So that's our literary analysis paragraph rubric. Okay, Make sure you open up your own and read carefully the directions on the left-hand side of the rubric and also the more philosophical um, stuff that I write at the top about writing literary analysis. All right, have a blast. Bye.